YouTube, it's Chris, welcome back to the channel. This video is an AMD CPU overclocking guide and a fairly simple one. It's fairly simple to overclock these CPUs. Will you see huge gains? No. Will you see small gains? Yes. A majority of my viewers will already know how to do this. It's fairly simple, but this is for the people that don't know how to do this. I won't be going in depth with stress testing because that is a highly debated topic at the end of the day, but I'll push you guys in the right direction on sort of where to go and what to look for and what to do when it comes to stability stress testing. Now, at the end of the day, nothing will replace a really, really good cooler, okay? Because the AMD CPUs and the way they work is there is a boost temp algorithm. You cannot bypass that, right? So a really, really good cooler or having your cooler put on properly with your fans cranked up, maybe the pump maxed, that's probably your best bet. But we can try to squeeze and manipulate BIOS or software a little bit more to get a little bit more out of the CPU. So you guys, you aren't going to see huge gains here, but you might see a little bit. Another thing that needs an honorable mention, you might be overclocking your CPU and you might actually see no difference in the application that you're using or the game you're playing. Uh, let's say you've got a really good cooler and you play Counter-Strike or Valorant. Generally speaking, uh, if you've got a super good cooler, you probably won't see a difference there. Let's say you go play something like Battlefield, which is way more CPU heavy. You will actually probably see a bit of a difference there, right? So instead of, let's say, your 7800XOD boosting to 4.7, 4.8 in Battlefield because it's so CPU heavy and it's getting hotter, you might see it boost a little higher, which is, you know, nice. Now, will you see a temperature difference? Generally speaking, depending on the application, no. So let's go back to saying Counter-Strike and Valorant, you know, something sort of more light on the CPU, I would say. Um, yeah, you might see a temperature difference there because the CPU is already boosting to a sort of max advertised if you've got things set up right and you've got a really good cooler on it. Um, but then, you know, you go play Battlefield and then you might actually see the temps a little bit higher or the same, but the CPU is boosting higher, right? But here's the thing, right? If you get the CPU boosting higher, it may run hotter or the same anyway, because like I said, boost temp algorithm, right? You know, when the CPU boosts higher, it's going to run hotter too. So there's that. There's, I've seen a lot of people like us, they say, I've undervolted my CPU. I'm not seeing a temperature difference. Or you, you're getting, the, the CPU is going to try to boost higher now because it, it's running a little cooler. So there's that. So that's really important for you guys to understand when it comes to this. Okay, so let's get started with sort of the guide. Now, for laptop users, use AMD Ryzen Master. Do not try to overclock the CPU, just undervolt it. It's fairly straightforward. I'm not going to cover AMD Ryzen Master. For everyone else, I would recommend BIOS. Now, if you're on a 5600X3D, 5700X3D, 5800X3D, there are a lot of BIOSes and motherboards that won't let you undervolt um, in the motherboard, like in the BIOS, okay? So you'll probably have to use software. I'll cover that here. But every other CPU, we should be, unless you're on a laptop, we should be good to do things in BIOS and I'd much prefer and recommend to do things in BIOS because it's more on a hardware level, right? So some, I already talked about the stability stress testing, but some honorable mentions here would be hardware info, sensors tab, all right? We can see the temperatures on the cores. We can see what the cores are boosting to. We can also quickly and easily check for hardware errors because it'll log hardware errors rather than going into Windows Event View, which can be annoying. The hardware errors will be down the bottom. Core Cycler, someone's made a script. It's really, really easy to use. Recommendation here. OCCT um, needs an honorable mention. It has a Core Cycler. So let's say you wanted to get into the nitty gritty instead of doing a minus 10 undervolt on all cores. Let's say you want to get really, really nitty gritty. And you know, some cores you can undervolt lower than others. This can be quite useful. Wire Cruncher needs an honorable mention. Now, like I said, for the 56, 57, and 5800 X3Ds, where the undervolting settings aren't working in BIOS, we've got a software option here, PBO2 tuner. Links will be in the description. This is the guide here. And a good friend of mine, Zoikware, has done a script, which saves a lot of time. It'll just set it up for you. It's really, really nice. So I will cover that there. Now, I'm pretty sure I've covered and mentioned everything that I need to at this point of the video. I'm going to boot up a game and I'm going to show you sort of the, like the default settings on my CPU. You can go to your um, CPU, like the AMD CPU webpage, look up your CPU and see what the advertised boost clock is. Because generally speaking, that's what we want to try to hit all the time. Like that's the point of this. 
Can you push the CPU past the factory advertised boost clock? No, like you, generally speaking, you, you can't, right? Um, that, that's an Intel thing, okay? Um, now look, there are, you can overclock these things with um, E clock uh, or B clock. Um, I really don't recommend that. And I see a lot of people trying to do all core overclocks on AMD CPUs. Please stop, you're going to make it way, run way worse and you'll have worse frames and 1% lows. So an all core overclock isn't recommended here. PBO is good. We need to play with it and manipulate it. That, that's how these CPUs are designed. These are not Intel chips. For people out there that are doing all core overclocks on your AMD CPU, stop. <laughs> Please stop. Now, just for this video, I've booted up the Taylor's Principle 2 just to show you guys. Um, these are the default settings. So Precision Boost Overdrive is actually disabled by default. Okay, I do have the um, RAM profile loaded right now. As you can see, I'm only sort of boosting to 5.1. Temperatures are really good. Generally speaking, my specific CPU, once you start to go over the 60 degree mark, that's when it down clocks. So we've got some headroom here, at least in this application. Um, so let's go into BIOS and I'll show you guys what you can do. So we'll jump into BIOS, spam F2 or delete. It generally gets you into BIOS. Really recommend most of you guys, well, all of you guys, please always update your BIOS. Get on the latest at this point. All right, and make sure you have the RAM profile loaded in BIOS. Expo, XMP, DOCP, whatever it is, that's fairly, fairly important. Especially on non X3D chips, it makes a huge difference. Please put your RAM profile on. If your RAM profile is not working, go check out my optimization video, the most recent one. I cover uh, all the ins and outs of why, why, or why, might, why or why not that might not work. Most laptop users will be locked out of that, so you won't be able to um, run a RAM profile. Okay, so every bias is going to look different. Do not be overwhelmed. If you're on Asus, you might be able to find it in AI Tweaker. Um, there is a OC Tweaker as well. Um, most of you and on most AMD platforms, the easiest way to get to the uh, CPU overclocking setting is just go to advanced, right? And look for a page that says AMD overclocking. On Asus boards, you'll have to scroll quite a fair bit down. Generally speaking, it's around here on most boards, okay? We'll accept, we'll go to Precision Boost Overdrive, okay? If you guys don't want any headaches and you don't want to do any stability stress testing, but you want the most out of your CPU without like with minimal headache, crank up your fan speeds on the, the CPU cooler, whether it be on you, you're on air or water. Okay. And, and max the pump, right? Max the pump out. Even just repaste if you haven't done it for a while, that, that's going to make a nice difference. Okay. And then just enable precision boost overdrive. This is AMD's auto overclock setting. You generally don't have to worry about stability testing with this and you can just go about your day and go and play no headaches. And this is why I've only sort of covered this in my latest optimization video because I don't want to be giving people headaches at the end of the day. This is a very easy thing to do. So crank your fans, crank your pump, precision boost overdrive enabled. Away you go. You don't need to stability test. Just enjoy. If you want to sort of manipulate things a little bit more or get a little bit more out of the CPU and you're playing more sort of CPU heavy games, like, you know, that you think the CPU could boost a little higher, here's what we do next. All right, we can change this to advanced. Now, some boards will have a separate setting where you can still leave precision boost overdrive to enabled and there'll be another sort of sub menu and you can go advanced as well. That's fine, just leave precision boost overdrive enabled and then you can go to advanced as well. It just sort of just depends on board. That's fine. Um, now, in this case, if we go to an advanced, uh, precision boost overdrive is going to be enabled anyway, but I just thought I'll, I'll let you guys know that I've seen some Asus boards have like a separate setting for advanced and PBO. So it's fine, just leave PBO enabled um, and go to advanced, all right? So what we want to do is when it go to CPU boost clock overdrive, we can set this to enabled positive. We don't want to underclock the CPU. We want to sort of overclock the CPU or tell the CPU to try to boost its max all the time. So enabled positive, okay? And we can max this number out here. I'm just going to spam nine and press enter. 200 is always going to be the max from what I've seen on AM4 and AM5s. What we've done here is we've asked the CPU to boost higher at its sort of maximum. Now, like I said before, if you guys have a bad cooler, this could make things worse, all right? Um, so that's a thing as well, right? 
pulling matters more than any of this stuff, right? And once we've done that, if you want a little bit more out of it, we can go to Curve Optimizer. Now this will undervolt the CPU. Remember what I said, we can tell the CPU to boost max, which we've just done, but if it's getting hot, right, or there's certain situations where it's running hotter than others, it's going to downclock. We can't bypass the boost temp algorithm, but we can kind of manipulate it a little bit and we can get the CPU to run cooler so it does boost higher. So Curve Optimizer is for that. Go to Curve Optimizer, okay? What we can actually do is we can change. You guys won't see this, so it'll kind of be like that. That's what you will see. Change disabled to all core, right? We want we don't want to overvolt it. We want to undervolt it, so you would go negative. And a really safe value for most of you to start will be 10. So that'd be minus 10 all core. This CPU I've already tested. I can do 20, which is quite nice. And then that's it. So if you guys don't want too much headache, most CPU should be able to do, and you don't want to do like heavy, heavy stress tests and you just can't be asked. Just do minus 10, right? Save and exit, away you go. Go play a bunch of games. If the PC randomly black screens or you get CPU error code blue screens, well, then it's just not working, unfortunately. So you can try maybe five, right? Five will be less value, minus, which is technically minus five. Now for the guys that want to get super advanced and you want to get into a core cycler and then sort of individually do each cause because you can get a little bit more out of it, right? You can go to per core, okay? And then, you know, we've got core zero is core one. All right. We, we want all these to negative. So let's say um, you want to do stability stress test. You do score cycler. Let's say, you know, you'd go minus 10 on everything and you wanted to test per core. So let's just do minus 10 on everything as an example. I'm just going to show you an example here, but I'm not going to run um, per core. Just do it to all the cores, okay? So if it's a 7800 XOG, there would be like eight. So be zero to seven okay sort of like that right so let's go you go do like the the core cycle uh, stability tests and it looks like it passes great and then you could and you, but, but you've done minus 15 on all core and it fails well that's when you could do per core so you would start with maybe minus 15 on core one and leave the rest on um, minus 10 right go do the core cycler again and it might pass and you're like oh sweet so i can do minus 15 on this right now i need to find out which core failed on minus 15. so come back in a bios do it again and do it per core that's a really rough guide on per core under vaulting uh generally speaking i just don't bother um too much headache and such minimal gain but the guys that want to squeeze the absolute max out of the cp you can do this to get to run cooler because some of you might have a bad core which doesn't like to be undervolted um, as much, or some of you might even have a bad core which doesn't need to be un doesn't like to be undervolted at all, and that can be a thing too. So if you really want to squeeze the absolute max and you've got the time, you have the time and you have the effort, you could do it this way. Just for this video, just to show you guys that there's going to be a difference in game. I'm just going to do all core. I'll do negative twenty because I know it works on my CPU. Please don't just copy this and expect it to work. All right, yeah, and I'm going to save it. Save an exit from BIOS. So we've got precision boost overdrive technically enabled, which is on advanced. CPU boost clock overdrive enabled positive plus 200 and an all core um, undervolt of minus 20. But for some reason, BIOS isn't showing that. But yeah, that's what we're doing. So we'll go boot up the game and we'll see the kind of difference. All right, jump back into the game. And as you can see now, my CPUs are boosting to 5250. Um, which is a, a little bit better. Now, in, in real world gains, it's not going to be huge. If you have an X3D chip, um, the core speed doesn't matter sort of as much. A non X3D chips will probably see more of a gain if you benchmark it. But generally speaking, you're not going to be, I'm honestly, guys, you're probably only going to see like 10 or 20 more frames doing a, a CPU um, overclock. So it's, you, it's not going to be a huge gain, right? Not going to be a huge gain, but it's something. And, you know, as per request, I um, wanted to cover that here. Now, another thing that needs a mention, right? So let's say that you've gone all out and you've put the time and effort into doing, um, you know, precision boost overdrive on plus 200. You've done like a per core undervolt and you've passed stability stress tests and everything's great. And you don't get blue screens and you don't get crashes in games, but you're randomly idling on the desktop and the PC just black screens. 
that's a thing too. Um, you could try mucking around with load line calibration. It gets sort of fairly complicated. Um, in my at that point, you might want to just back it off a little bit. Like that, that can actually happen because, uh, technically speaking, the the CPU is sort of like a little more idle state. Um, not sort of not under load. So I've had that happen to me on my 5950X, which was actually quite annoying. So I thought I'd mention that here. Um, if your PC is just randomly shutting off, like you probably want to back off the undervolt a little bit more, even though it's passing everything. It's kind of annoying, but that, that can happen too. So I thought I'd mention that. So this is not an incredibly CPU heavy game, right? But let me tell you, if I go boot up Battlefield 5, I am not going to be hitting 5250. That there is absolutely no way. Maybe five gigahertz, five one if I'm lucky, because the CPU is running way, way hotter, and there's nothing we can do to bypass that. My only next step would either be a way bigger cooler, which probably wouldn't do much because I'm already rocking an Arctic um, 360 version three. So really, the only next step would be for me to delid the CPU and go direct die. Right, that would be the only difference that would that I could make in temperatures here. I mean, look, you can disable uh, SMT on this CPU to run 10 degrees cooler. That'll fix that. But then my games are going to run worse because 99% of games want hyperthreading, right? SMT want threads. So I'd actually harm my frames and 1% lows at that point. But I just thought I'd mention that. Help you guys out a little bit. All right, for the guys that have a 5600X3D, uh, 5700X3D or 5800X3D and the BIOS undervolt settings are not working, we can use software to get this to work. Um, and, you know, let's say you, haven't, you don't want to use AMD Ryzen Master, which I, I don't like to use anyway, and I don't even know if it will work with the X3D chips actually. Uh, good question. Maybe someone in the comments can, can type down. Maybe, maybe it does work for... Um, AMD Ryzen Master from memory, it didn't back then when I first got my 5800X3D. Right, so I have done a video on undervolting these CPUs. So this guide would work for the 56, 57, 5800X3D. Um, but it's kind of a little dated. Like, it, it still works. It's just a little bit annoying to get it to work. If you kind of need UAC disabled um, to use the shortcut apply on startup method. And my new guide, I'm kind of leaned away from disabling UAC as you guys might have seen. I wanted to sort of keep security first and then give people the option to disable security if they wanted to with everything in a security off script. So there's that. So I mentioned that you don't have to check out the video. You're better for just checking out what we're, I'm going to show you now. But for just in case PBO2 tuner goes missing or, you know, like I, I've seen software like this over time um, you know, it can get lost. So for those, for that purpose, I'm um, put it up on GitHub. So the link, um, to the download from that video, I'm going to put up, I've put up on GitHub. It'd be on my GitHub. So if you go repositories, it won't be pinned. Okay. Go to repositories and you go to files. I've just put it there just to archive it, um, PBO tuner, um, with the shortcut under vault method, just in case this file ever goes missing on the internet. Cause that would really suck. And I've seen that happen before. So you could check out this guide and read the guide. But why do that when my good friend Zoicware has made a script that'll do it all for you, which is nice. So let's click code, click download zip. Okay, the links will all be in the description for you guys. All right, pretty straightforward. We'll go to the downloads folder. We will extract the files. Okay, now some of you may need to right click this, go properties and then unblock the file. And some of you may need to allow PowerShell scripts in settings. Okay. Just click, look for scripts and just make sure like this is on. Okay. Right. Um, otherwise you probably won't be able to run scripts. So what this script is going to do is it's going to boot up, ask us if we want to install PBO tuner. We will press yes. And then it will apply an undervolt through task scheduler which I believe won't apply until we've restarted. So every time we boot, it'll use the program and it will undervolt the CPU in task scheduler, which is really, really nice. It's going to save you a lot of time rather than following the guide and manually doing things through task scheduler. So good on you, Zoic, for making this one. Absolute legend. I won't be able to fully show you how it works because my CPU was unsupported 
but I'll roughly show you how it works. So we run the script. Okay, it'll ask us if we want to install PBO Tuner. If you don't, you guys might see a UAC admin prompt come up. Just click yes there. If the script doesn't work at all, it's more than likely an issue on your end and you haven't enabled allow PowerShell scripts in your Windows settings. So you'll need to do that. Okay, so we'll click on you. Might, and some of you actually might need to run. Um, some of you won't be able to double click on it. You have to right click and run as PowerShell. Okay. So we'll do that, install PBO Tuner. Yes, we want to install PBO Tuner. So it's going to download, extract, and install PBO Tuner in our program files or program files 86. So for most of you, like I said, start with minus 10, it's fairly safe. If you wanted to do per call, you could do per call. Now let's say that you wanted to change these. You could either manually go do it in task scheduler, or you could just simply run this again and it will override the original task scheduler item okay so just for the purposes of this video i'll do minus 10 all core press apply and then that'll be it okay so what i would recommend doing at that stage right because what that's going to do is actually apply that in task scheduler but we will really need to need to restart for that to apply now yours will look a little bit different if you have the 56 57 or 5800 x3d because technically you know my settings didn't really apply here because it's not really supported for the CPU, but there it is there, PBO tuner on startup. So go restart the computer, right? And once you've restarted the computer, go to your C drive, program files 86. I believe that's where he's put it. Let's see. Okay, no apologies. Program files, PBO tuner. It's already installed. So after you've restarted, open up PBO tuner. Okay, you won't see these error messages if you're on that CPU. And then you should see a program like this and you should see it already be minus 10 on all core. So that's how you'll know it's worked. The script is really nice if you don't want to have to manually go into it. And let's say you wanted to try a different value, but simply just go run the script again. All right. Run the script again. And if you've already, if it's already installed, you don't need to reinstall it. So you can just press no. All right. And you can go change the values here. It makes it makes it a lot more simpler. So now you wanted to do minus 20. Um, apply that'll override the original uh, item in task scheduler okay and you can restart and then yeah it'll be already done so like i said you don't have to go and check to, to make sure that actually got applied you, you don't actually have to go check and open it but um yeah just uh, initially maybe just go check if it just to make sure that it's actually working but this will apply uh, on startup every time let's say you want to remove it I will ask Zoic to update his script um, to have an option to uh, disable it, which would be nice. But to disable it, if you guys don't want it anymore, go to task scheduler, okay? Then go down here, right click PBO tuner in task scheduler library. You can simply just um, delete this. That'll remove that. And obviously to just remove the program, go to program files 86 PBO tuner. You can just delete this folder here. And then that'll be it. I will ask Zoic to make a removal option because it's technically his script. But yeah, that'll get you guys out of trouble. But if you guys want to painstakingly go through the old way of doing it and you have UAC disabled, you can follow this video. Um, it just has a simple shortcut on startup, the startup folder. Um, or if you want to manually do it through task schedule, understand how it works. This is the guide for you. Links will be in the description. Hope you found this video helpful, guys. You're not going to be able to screw, squeeze heaps more frames out of your CPU. You're not going to be a bypass how much it's going to factory boost to, but you can try to get it to boost a little bit more, especially in the CPU heavy titles. Nothing will replace a good cooler um, or having the cooler put on properly. So that's should be the first priority out of anything. And like I said, if you guys don't want any headaches, just max the pump, max the fans, enable precision boost overdrive and bias, call it a day, All right? Have you found it helpful? Fairly simple guide, pretty straightforward. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.